Hello people, and welcome to the content creator map pack tier list. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we are going to rank all of the content creator maps that came with the content creator map pack alongside the vehicles and airports expansions, and check out each of these maps and exactly what they have to offer. Of course, these are all based on my own personal opinion. If you feel I've placed a map too high or too low, feel free to get down in the comments and let me know. Otherwise, let's get started, shall we? First of all is Biomes Valley, and this for me actually goes into a must play. So Biomes Valley is a European themed map with a 73% buildable area. It has no sea connection, but has all available natural resources. Taking a look at those natural resources, we have lots of fertile land marked off by kind of tree fields, if you like. So kind of some field vibes happening with a ton of oil uh, over in the other biome, which we'll have a look at in a minute with some deposits of oil knocking about in the mountains. Taking a look at the wind map, it's pretty random. Lots of wind space out in the 8 to 1 tar radius and some higher spots within the middle as well. Taking a look at our terrain, again, kind of very friendly to airports, as you would imagine, released alongside the airports DLC, with some mountains over in the north and the southwest, with lots of flat land and buildable space in the 8 to 1 tar radius as well. If you are looking to do some fishing, then salmon and anchovies are certainly winning the battle for water space. But otherwise, let's take a little fly around Biomes Valley, shall we? So it definitely takes after its name here. Uh, we're starting to see the introduction of different biomes in a city skylines map. And this is what really pulls it up into must play for me. I really like this concept. So we're kind of running with almost like a kind of a savanna vibe out here. Okay, it's not quite desert. Definitely some kind of like African savanna feel to this one. And then we move into a rich, lush farming valley. And I really like this idea of combining two different kind of map styles, like a desert and, you know, a lush valley separated by a river. I hope we certainly see more of this in any future map releases or indeed cities too. Uh, the combination of two different biomes is something I'm a huge fan of. Checking out all our connections, there is nothing wrong. No kind of bridge junk happening or anything. Nice smooth rail lines coming over the rivers and the riverbanks acceptable for me a little high in some places but this is acceptable i think i don't really hate this and it has to be said um, i really do like uh, the waterways we've seen a lot of these live oaks a lot of the new trees up alongside the water here uh, some might be a little close to the water i have seen evidence of kind of trees right on the edge of the banking but this is okay you know kind of right here so it's nice to see some new kind of forest palettes around but Really like the waterways, very unique shapes, and they taper off into these kind of smaller streams as well. So lots of opportunity for waterfront builds here. Of course, you don't have a sea connection, so there'll be no ocean front or ports, anything like that in this map. And then we've also got some kind of dried up riverbed vibes over here as well. You could certainly terraform this and let the water come all the way through, or you can leave it as a dried riverbed and you know, factor this sort of theme into your build, if that's what you wanted to do. And we are given uh, custom trumpet interchanges for your starting tile instead of just having the regular vanilla one. This is always appreciated, right? When we get the pre-built interchanges like this. And I like the way that the farmland has been cut up here. Uh, you're kind of getting some almost preset field vibes, right? So quite helpful to come in with the Industries DLC and set up kind of farms within these preset frames using the trees as guidelines. I appreciate that. That's quite nice. And the mountains aren't anything to write home about. Nothing too severe here. More kind of rolling hills as opposed to any significant mountains. But Biomes Valley, a really interesting theme. I definitely love the combination of two different types of landscape with the kind of the lush green valley and the kind of hotter, drier savanna vibes out towards the edge of the map there. Um, I really like the idea and I hope it's showing off more in future releases, if not a Cities 2. But some nice flat buildable space, all your resources, shame about no sea connection, but nice waterways, very interesting map. It's going to fall as a must play for me. Next up on the content creator map tier list is Desert Pass. And this for me goes as a middle of the road B tier map. So Desert Pass is a European themed map with a 89% buildable area. So tons of buildable space here. There is no sea connection and basically no fertile land either. Taking a look at the natural resources, it is oil city, like huge oil fields uh, and real big refinery builds possible in this map, alongside some pretty significant ore builds too. 
Taking a look at the wind, it's split pretty evenly across the entire map. Nothing to note here. Taking a look at the terrain again, vast majority of the map is super flat, including a good chunk of your 81 tile radius, with some rolling gentle sand dunes uh, knocking about across a few places. So if you're looking for a real flat, easy, beginner-friendly map, Desert Pass is a good shout. And as always, there are salmon and anchovy wars happening in the river, with anchovies very much dominating the little lake over in the southeast. So Desert Pass is now the second uh, desert map that we have in City Skylines after the Desert Oasis that came out with Sunset Harbour. And definitely having no fertile land and no sea connection um, brings its score down a little bit. You're narrowing yourself out of a lot of industrial builds. I also rated Sunset Harbour's Desert Oasis B tier 2, um, and I think you really have to buy into the theme here. It's a lot of sand, <laughs> which is fine. It's a map called Desert Pass, and there's a river passing through it, so it's going to take after its name. But I think what it is, is I've just been spoiled by Desert Map recently, having played um, Eggsy's and Karina's Ilos. <laughs> That's like the perfect Desert Map for me. And um, I think it's missing some sort of sprite off of the ground. It almost looks like... Kind of like it's made out of Play-Doh. I don't quite know how to describe it. It's a little bit untextured almost, I think, the ground. And that, for me at least, uh, really detracts from the build. Um, again, for those at Ilos, so know we have kind of grass sprites everywhere and... It helps, you know, it adds texture to the ground and you can see what it's like when it doesn't have this here. But we do have uh, some nice waterfront opportunities. There is little pockets of grass making themselves known around the water. Uh, likewise, over by the main river as well, you're getting some kind of more lush, fertile vibes over here. Although there is no fertile land. So the map does actually read that it has like one hectare of fertile land somewhere, but I cannot find it anywhere. So it's basically non-existent. We do get an enormous uh, custom trumpet interchange using the three-lane highway roads. Um, very oversized, so it looks cool. I kind of like the elevated bridges here. Might be too big for some people. Of course, it's all infrastructure that can be rebuilt to your own desire. Of course, they're vanilla maps, so the lane mathematics aren't great. You'd ideally want mass transit here for these, but that's just the vanilla limitations. Nothing the creator can do about that. And once you're kind of away from the river, this is kind of it. <laughs> you know, this is this is Desert Pass. It's um, it's a desert theme map, and it's not going to be for everyone. I am enjoying the riverbank detailing that's happening here, though. This has to be said with the new uh, bushes we're getting with the long grass too. Uh, long grass is making a real big difference actually to how we detail riverbanks now. Some nice rocks out here also. Okay, I do like this detailing. And we've also got some little pockets of uh, vanilla detail over here as well with some broken castle walls and a classic abandoned factory. And one thing I will appreciate as well is the introduction of some repeated palm spice between the highways. Very much a fan of this. <laughs> okay, this is good. Although it's not particularly even, it's evenly spread, but I'm a fan of repeated palm action, okay? I can get on board with this. But otherwise, for me, a Desert Pass falls into the same vibe as Desert Oasis. If you're looking for a desert map, then great, it's nice to have another one. But they are very distinct builds with lots of oil and some significant ore deposits. You're going to have no farming, no sea connection here. And like I've mentioned, the texture of the ground for me, I think it just wants some grass sprites in there. It's a little too smooth, but I understand it's sand. It's kind of the vibe and the feel. Just not particularly for me. So middle of the road B tier for Desert Pass. Next up is Farmland Flats, and this for me goes into a healthy A tier. So Farmland Flats is a temperate themed map with a 90% buildable area. It has no sea connection and all available natural resources. Taking a look at those natural resources, everything is split pretty evenly with lots of fertile land. Again, divided up by those kind of tree fields. We'll have a look at this in a minute. Lots of ore deposits and some ore knocking around within the 8 to 1 tile radius especially. Pretty random wind spots here, so you will struggle for wind turbines in certain places. The terrain, again, this is a 90% buildable area, so super flat and rolling, no significant peaks or mountains in this map. And yet again, uh, the fight for water space is being won by salmon, with pockets of anchovy, shellfish and tuna knocking around in certain parts of the waterways as well. And Farmland Flats is essentially an entire map of one half of Biomes Valley. We're getting these kind of carved up preset fields with lots of fertile land in between. Um, I am a fan of this, we get this quite a lot in England. So if you're looking for maybe a British themed map, then uh, Farmland Flats uh, could certainly be uh, the one for you. There is a relatively small river that flows through the map that opens up into some kind of basin over here. So plenty of opportunities for waterfront builds. 
There is touches of terrain and terraforming junk happening here. You can see where it just spiked up a little bit, where it goes a little bit knobbly, but nothing that can't be softened out with your terrain tools. Do you get a big uh, roundabout style interchange here? A nice little four way. Uh, not particularly my design, uh, but it's big, it's very grandiose, and it works. Okay, it's going to keep people moving four different directions across your highway. And we're seeing sensible rail heights here as well. Okay, this is always appreciated, especially when we compare it to. Some of the base game maps, nice to see that the rail connections have improved here. Also utilising the different layers of height as well as it comes into a bridge. This is nice rail work. We're also seeing some new forest pallets coming here again. Seeing some of these new boreal pines alongside the oaks. There is trees in the water, which is a little bit annoying. You probably want to get rid of these for realism points of view. There's quite a few in the water actually over here, so you definitely want to trim all this up. And the waterways are all sensibly terraformed, uh, if not a little narrow in some places, but again... This can be terraformed out if you want to make them wider in certain places, but nice riverways, nothing particularly wrong with these. And checking out some of these little hills and mounds that are around the map, again, it's all kind of gentle, ruling hills, and this would make a nice little spot for a castle build out, so to kind of sit out and look across. But otherwise, there's not really too much to say about Farmland Flats. It very much lives up to its name. It has a lot of farmland, and it is flat, with some waterways, some nice rolling hills. A great map to be building an airport on with a 90% buildable area. That's one of the highest we've ever seen. And it's nice. It's pretty. It's a nice, sensible A-tier map. I don't mind farmland flats. Next up is Meandering River. And this, for me, falls again into a healthy A-tier map. So Meandering River is a boreal-themed map with an 83% buildable area. It has all available outside connections and all available natural resources. Taking a look at the natural resources, uh, big chunks of fertile land and ore in and around your starting tile and the central flatland, with some pockets of oil in there as well, but lots of oil out within the 81 tile radius. Taking a look at the wind, uh, lots of windy spots on the mountain peaks and near the coastline and the starting flatland, so plenty of opportunities for wind turbines. Taking a look at the terrain height, uh, the 81 tile radius, especially in the west, north and south, is pretty mountainous, you won't get much building out here. But lots of rolling flatland in the middle and especially over near the coast. And yet again, uh, salmon and anchovy showing that they are the dominant species in city skylines. But otherwise, we have a map that lives up to its name in Meandering River. Now, this kind of reminds me of a more refined kind of murky coast or Wolf Creek uh, from the campus DLCs. Um, nice big river with some boreal mountains. This is very much my style, so this is going to rank pretty highly for me. Taking a look at our starting interchange, we are met with a custom trumpet, which again, very nice indeed. Always enjoy seeing these custom interchanges as opposed to the regular vanilla ones. The mountains, whilst not the best mountain terraforming we've ever seen, I'll probably say Frozen Shires Mountains from Snowfall are like the god tier mountains for like proper mountain terraforming. I really like those, but lots of nice rolling hills here that are beginning to go into kind of the mountain territory. Um, heading back over this way, we do have oil pockets out this side, and this is within your 8 to 1 tar radius, but you're not going to build anything here. Terrain is extremely unfriendly um, out in these far corners, but it's nice, and it's there. Right? You can get some mountainside communities in here if you like, and plenty of opportunities for kind of coastal waterfront builds along here too. At least on one side, this one's a little, a little too mountainous, but... Uh, plenty of opportunity all the way along here for ports and you know, downtown waterfronts, whatever it is you wanted to build. All available in Meandering River. There is a small touch of dimensional tearing <laughs> just here uh, where the rail joins back to the land. Uh, that's not particularly great, but again, either with just redrawing this or move it uh, to shift the node off of the extreme terrain change will fix that. I don't think it happens over here now, but, you know, apart from that, nice sensible rail junction to come over the river. It also happens here as well. Nice sensible networks, no horrific terraforming happening here. There's not that much in terms of detailing um, away from the riverbanks here. You're getting kind of your usual overgrowth and rock detailing with you know, different kind of layouts and formations here as the river meanders around. So if you're looking for kind of those vanilla detailing points, there's not that many in this map. Uh, they do have some more kind of rock and stone uh, detailing up here. Okay, shout out to the Deep Rock Galactic fans. 
Uh, but otherwise, Meandering River, um, it's scoring so high just because it's very much up my street. Uh, it's a boreal river themed map with mountains. For those that watch Palavin, you know how much I love enjoy building in this theme. And like I said at the start, it feels like a slightly more refined, much more buildable uh, murky coast on Wolf Creek. Nothing particularly amazing to write a home about that brings it into a must play, um, but certainly one of the more interesting and uh, aesthetically appealing uh, boreal maps that you can play in the game now. So, decent A tier for me. Next up is Mountain Taper, and this for me uh, falls into another must play. So Mountain Taper is a temperate themed map with a 78% buildable area. It has all available outside connections and all available natural resources. Taking a look at the natural resources, lots of fertile land and oil and a couple of pockets of ore in and around the flatlands with big chunks of ore and oil up and around the mountain. Taking a look at the wind, as you would expect, the coastline and the mountain peaks are going to be super windy. And those terrains, again, really nice, flat, super buildable area besides some mountains over in the southwest. And finally, the shellfish are flourishing over in Mountain Taper with lots of salmon and anchovy ha action happening as well. And just look how pretty this map is, everyone. I'm a huge fan of this one. Um, it's kind of like a a more refined uh, Rosalind Peninsula that we looked at in one of the other tier lists. That was a really nice coastal map, but let's have a little look around getting beaches with our new coconut trees appearing here. Always a fan of these new tree palettes. Probably one of the more interesting uh, starting interchanges we've ever seen in City Skylines. I think this probably takes the one as the most interesting, right? We're working with a double trumpet configuration here. Uh, really cool. Really like this design. Uh, I've seen Imperator build this one before. And uh, yeah, really cool. Much more interesting than anything else we usually get, right? And again, a wonderful uh, repeated green belt design of some of the new kind of pink bushes with the California palms. Love that. Very happy to see kind of repeated highway decoration coming in. Really nice stuff. We're also getting very sensible uh, rail connections here as well. Uh, we split off into two rails for a significant distance before they split off into their own directions. So very happy to see sensible rail junctions in the map. And again, with these kind of nice sensible rail networks transitioning between the layers of height. Much nicer than anything we get in the base game map. So this is wonderful. And perhaps one of my favourite things that you can ever see in a map is a mountain stream. Yes, please, there are a couple of these. So we've just got a water source point, um, kind of surrounded by some rocks, which is great, okay? You can get some really nice nature reserve builds out of these. Uh, likewise over here as well, we also have another one, again, which is detailed up with our vanilla rocks. So, really cute. Love the waterfall vibes here. And I just love the coastline. It's such a pretty map to build on. Like I said, a slightly more buildable and perhaps noob-friendly version of uh, Rosalind Peninsula with all the waterways. Kind of getting some almost like Swampland vibes over here as well. You get some really nice fishing community builds out of this. Really, really pretty looking map. Again, we're getting some more kind of rock and cliff face detail in here. I really like this idea of placing a ton of the vanilla rock assets in a big row like this up against the, the water. I really like that. That's something I've never really thought to use this much of them against the waterfront, but it really works, right? You could almost take a few off of these and then tear a build to kind of sit above the rocks and over this lake. That'd be uh, that'd be really nice. Your mountain peaks here out in your 8 one tile radius, nothing too severe, so lots of friendly nature reserve builds and perhaps some more rural communities if you wanted to. But uh, no kind of massively unfriendly, totally unbuildable terrain happening in this map. And I love just the way that this map sits. We've got lots of nice kind of parallel uh, important networks here with the rain and the highway running alongside each other. With all these cute little tropical beaches that are just scattered uh, around the map. But otherwise, I am a huge lover of Mountain Taper. I can definitely see uh, myself playing this map at some point. Lots of different themes to go with. Coastal, inland, hills, slight mountains, streams, rivers. Really nice super map. It's got all your connections, all your resources. It's temperate, which is a nice kind of happy theme for most. I have time for Mountain Taper. It's a must play for me. Next up, we have River Valley Plain, and this for me falls into a pretty low C tier. 
So Red River Valley is a boreal themed map with a 59% buildable area. It has no sea connection and it has all available natural resources. Checking out those natural resources, we are met with pretty significant chunks of fertile land, oil and ore, or knocking around within the central plain, if you like, which is very much what this map takes its name after. The wind, somewhat awkward to be fair, uh, a lot of the windy spots to get the most amount of a wind turbine up in the mountains in the 8 to 1 tower radius, not that much within the lowlands. Taking a look at the terrain, um, map is extremely unfriendly to 8 to 1 tiles, you will not get anything built in the 8 to 1 tower radius, all your flatland is in the middle here. And taking a look at the fish, pretty split evenly across uh, all four types with uh, tuna, salmon, anchovy and shellfish uh, all holding at pretty decent sizes at various points across the waterways. So why indeed is it so low? And for me, it's a, a big point is the mountains. It's like a worse uh, crater falls. If you remember, we checked out that one. The build here is going to have to really lean into the mountain terrain here. Now, it's not the fact that I'm adverse to mountains. You know, Palavan had mountains, Navari had a ton of them. But it's what they look like because they essentially serve as the background to your city all the time, right? They are the backdrop and I'm just not a fan of this sort of terraforming. Very steep, very smooth. It's very prevalent over here um, on these peaks as you kind of look along the lateral line of this river. It's, it's just not for me. It's totally personal preference, but I can't stand these sort of mountains. Talking about some positives, I do love uh, the tiered trumpet design that's happening here as the starting tile. Um, love the way that everything kind of pops down on three different levels here. Um, really nice use of the terrain layer there to form an interchange. Big fan of that. Again, nice, smooth, happy uh, rail network infrastructure. Nothing wrong here. Also shout out to the new uh, vehicles as well. And taking a look around the back of these mountains as well. Super severe. This is all your 8 to 1 tile radius out here. Uh, you're just not going to get anything built. The terrain's way too unfriendly. So if you're a fan of kind of big maps, uh, River Valley Plain is not going to play a game with you. Uh, basically, no vanilla detailing props either in this map. Um, it's pretty much just a flat plain in the middle with a trumpet interchange and a single rail line. I don't mind the middle ground again. We're kind of getting these carved up kind of preset farms using the trees, which is a repeating theme in this pack and something I do like. But uh, the mountains here really, really murder this map for me. Um, I think there are some points that keep it out of crap mapped here. It's definitely not as bad as Winter Hill that we looked at, that which was our first crap map in these tier lists. But uh, certainly a low end C tier uh, for me. Next up on the content creator map tier list is the island. And this for me goes into a decent A tier. So the island is a tropical themed map with the 62% buildable area. It has no outside rail connection and all available natural resources. Taking a look at those natural resources, uh, enormous chunks of ore, especially up in kind of this southwest mountain with lots of fertile land in the mainland and pretty significant deposits of oil uh, over in the east as well. Taking a look at your wind map, a lot of the windy spots in and around the coastline with some up on the mountain peaks as well. Taking a look at the terrain, pretty New friendly and nice buildable areas along the mainlands with some taller peaks knocking around in the 8 to 1 tile radius, but lots of water in this map. And if you're interested in doing some fishing, then the shellfish are very much winning the war with uh, pockets of anchovy holding out in the rivers. And again, it falls uh, very similar to Mountain Taper. It's a nice tropical themed map with uh, some nice tropical beach opportunities as well. Uh, no outside rail connection is a little bit of a shame, but of course you can implement your own rail networks and um, again we're seeing some repeated i think these are the coconut palms are they or one of the coconut trees uh, repeated patterns in the highway always a fan of this right looks like an oak has accidentally spilled over into that pattern there we have some very nice uh, enormous kind of oversized interchanges here as well with a nice custom t design a pretty significant highway bridge this is the first time we've ever kind of seen a highway like this that kind of crosses over the river so if you're after those kind of more grandiose, important infrastructure vibes, then uh, the island certainly has them. I do like the way the highway kind of flows around the bay here. This is really nice, if not for some touches of terrain junk where the networks are a little too close together on slightly different elevations. Uh, nothing that can't be fixed with either uh, move it or network multi-tool slope function. 
but otherwise, it's a very uh, interesting uh, water-themed map again. If you're a fan of building around lots of waterways, you can do a ton of fishing in this map, then uh, you're really going to enjoy uh, the island, which is kind of taking its name off here, right? It is spelt like island instead of island, so a little bit of a play on words, but it's nice. Big fan of the white sandy beaches, of course. But again, for me, it falls very much into that same category of Rosalind Peninsula and Mountain Taper. A uh, very nice tropical themed waterway map, um, interesting to build on, and very much my style. Again, could fall uh, higher or lower for some people, and not everyone would enjoy uh, playing with this theme. But other than that, there's not really too much to say that hasn't already been covered in Rosalind Peninsula and Mountain Taper. If you're a fan of waterways, if you're a fan of the tropical theme with some new interesting infrastructure with this kind of major kind of highway bridge and that big oversized T interchange, it's something a little bit different. Definitely not the worst map in this pack. Nice, sensible, happy tropical theme. I like the island. And last but certainly not least, we have Tropical Pass, which for me is going to fall into a third must-play map. So Tropical Pass is, of course, a tropical-themed map with a 68% buildable area. It has all available outside connections and all available natural resources. Taking a look at those natural resources, you're going to get big chunks of fertile land with a couple of fairly sized oil deposits and some big chunks of ore in the south as well. Taking a look at the wind, pretty windy around the coastlines as you would imagine, with some windier spots on the mountain peaks. Again, another super water-heavy tropical map with our terrain feature here, but lots of space to build on in kind of the main flatlands. And shellfish and anchovies are absolutely winning the fight uh, for sea space. And sorry to touch on them again, but it's very much a map uh, in the vein of Rosalind Peninsula Mountain Taper. It's another really pretty waterway tropical vibes with some nicely terraformed uh, kind of cliffs here if you like really like this sort of stuff this is nice terraforming and again lots more white sandy beach vibes happening over here as well easily the most interesting and cool thing about this map is its initial highway infrastructure by far the coolest setup i've ever seen in one of these kind of map packs either map pack or dlc a really cool system as to how it switches everyone around here. Um, I couldn't build something like this. <laughs> this is really good. So, you know, nice to see all this kind of varied highway infrastructure. You know, you're comparing this sort of stuff to what we got in the, in the base game maps all those years ago. You now, just how far we've come. So, really cool um, highway networks here where it all kind of pans off into building here and there's another free spot there and over here as well, so huge fan of that, really like it. And it's some nice use of the terrain here as well, where the rail uh, kind of sinks down against the hill and maintains its height as it comes under the bridge, so again, some uh, nicer, more well-designed uh, network infrastructure. No dimensional tearing happening, everyone's sticking to the sensible layers, more nice to see. Getting some more rock detail up here with the cave and the kind of more phallic looking assets. It has been a kind of a repeating theme in this map pack that there isn't vast amounts of vanilla detailing. Not something that really bothers me. I usually end up deleting it anyway, especially like the old factories, but if you're a fan of it, it's probably worth mentioning. And we're seeing these uh, repeated parallel infrastructure vibes come back in again as well, like we saw in the other map. So this is all nice and easy to build around, right? Nice and easy to bring new junctions off of all this. Nice and friendly for beginners. Love this little, like, tropical cove over here. This is super cute. Lots of tourism and nightlife opportunities on this map. I can imagine, especially at nighttime, kind of positioning. Lots of nightlife up and around, kind of these sorts of places. Is uh, really going to look great. Really nice designs. Uh, this is out on, like, a little island as well. Or, like, a little peninsula, I guess, right? Again, some more of the heavy uh, rock uh, detailing coming in against the water. Uh, that we saw in one of the other maps too, so this isn't too bad, right? It gives a little more personality into what would otherwise just be kind of a muddy shoreline. And all these new kind of palms and tree pallets coming in now along the beach makes them so much more interesting, doesn't it? Having these new trees in. Huge fan of those. Yeah, and there is just so much like tropical island opportunities out here. Um, you could turn some of these islands into like their own dedicated nature reserve. Just lots of possibilities and a really interesting, fun map to play with. Um, I definitely need to get on one of these waterway tropical maps at some point, maybe join a live stream. And we can hang out and build an airport on one of these, but 
really pretty. I'm a huge fan of it. Again, all down to personal preference. People might not enjoy the tropical theme at all. And I would prefer never to touch this map. I've been getting these nice large uh, infrastructure vibes coming in again as well. So nice to see some elevated highway bridges like this for crossing larger bodies of water. Not something we see too often. Although there is touches of dimensional tearing, <laughs> which is never fun. Okay, this is where the network's a little bit too close to the edge of the uh, terrain height, but again, move it, can fix these. You do get a little bit of dimensional tearing under the bridge. But really cool highway infrastructure, again, hitting home the points of those kind of waterway tropical vibes that we've seen quite a lot today. And again, in Rosalind Peninsula, uh, during the campus tail list as well. Uh, something I'm a huge fan of, and I think most people uh, enjoy this sort of style as well. But otherwise, Tropical Pass, uh, very much a must-play map for me. I will certainly play on this at some point. Okay, guys, um, so just a quick note before we wrap up. Um, I'm back on the island map, uh, which is the one that we've looked at today, of course. And I've loaded in, um, as a lot of PC players will do, with Tree Anarchy on. Now, what this does is reveals the fact that there is actually trees beneath the networks. For PC players, this isn't too much of an issue. You can just forest brush this away and reclaim your tree count, or even to the point if you're playing with unlimited trees, then it's not much of an issue. But when you load in with Anarchy, you can see it's active here. Tree Anarchy is on. They do appear as you load the map. For console players, this is more of a problem because this will eat into your tree count, even though the trees are beneath the network. It mainly happens on this map, the island. The other ones it's not so bad on it only happens in a couple of places, but you can see where it's happening really badly here. And it also happens quite badly uh, over here as well, where this big uh, T junction is. So just to clarify, the map will look like this if you load in with Tree Anarchy on, which a lot of PC players will be doing. You can just forest brush them away to reclaim that tree count. It's not a huge issue, but I feel like it should probably be mentioned because it could be an issue for console players, but otherwise, at least you're aware of it. Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below really help me out. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Uh, big props to Sanctum Gamer for getting a map pack commission. That must be insanely cool for him, and I hope you've enjoyed our glance over those maps today. I will leave Sanctum Gamer's YouTube link down below if you want to go and check him out. He's a very heavily modded content creator, so if it's up your street, do go and give him a follow. And as always, if you feel I've played something too high or too low, uh, let's get down in the comments and start a little map discussion. Uh, let me know which one is your favourite and perhaps least favourite as well. But lots of new interesting map themes that have been brought into this pack by Sanctum. Definitely worth taking note about those trees under the networks. Um, it's easily the worst on the island and happens in a couple of places on the other maps, but not nearly as bad as that first one. Like I said, PC players can just forage brush it away and use move it to highlight just the trees. But console players, they will eat into your tree count and you should be aware that there are trees under those networks. But otherwise, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.